Well, th well, thank you, everybody. Um, it's interesting. I am going to do a little bit of a segue from what Rob was talking about because he used the word civic in uh, his presentation, and uh, um, I was also very impressed by the fact that what he is getting at, and I think I will be implicitly getting at also, is the importance of intrinsic rewards rather than the extrinsic rewards that museums have bet on for so long in saying that there's a certain satisfaction of involvement that really reaps terrific rewards. And I think that's what uh, that's getting at. Well, I'm going to talk about civic engagement in a digital age and what museums are doing to meet that uh, challenge. Uh, museums like to talk in soft, civilized, indoor voices, but sometimes it's time to speak just a little bit louder and say, do something, which is what civic engagement tends to be about. Now, in 2002, uh, the American Association of Museums came out with their book, Mastering Civic Engagement, which followed a lot of soul searching on their part about what the role of museums should be in the community. And really, civic engagement um, goes back much, much longer than that in, in many respects. But at that time, it, it was interesting. It was 2002, certainly the um, uh, 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 pre-Facebook and YouTube and all that. And they really had no mention of technology at all. So we've come quite, quite a long way. But I think what's important to think about is, is first, what is civic engagement? And there are many, many definitions of what civic engagement means. Uh, and I've chosen two that I like. That civic engagement is working to make a difference in the civic life of our communities and developing the combination of knowledge, skills, values, and motivations that make a difference. And those four, I think, match very nicely with what museums tend to do. Basically, we are talking about making better, more knowledgeable citizens. That's really what civic engagement is about. Now, that's from a, a, a good text on civic responsibility. But I like the next one even better, because it's civic engagement is the exercising of personal or collective agency, their power, their empowerment, in the public domain for the betterment of one's community. Civic engagement is the active involvement of visitors with social issues raised by Walker programs. And I like that because that emanates out of the museum community. And again, this touches very much uh, cl uh, closely with what Rob was saying about what matters to a community about a museum. And this takes it at it from a different perspective and an important one as well. Now the question is, museums are institutions of reflection, of memory, often of neutrality. Are museums ready to become Advocates, are they ready to do calls to action? Is the community ready to accept that role? Or is it somewhat maybe threatening or uncomfortable? And uh, one, uh, there's general sense that museums are ready for this through intentional and focused public discussions of civic issues, policies, and decisions that affect people's lives Museums can expand opportunity for democratic participation by encouraging broader, more diverse publics to give voice to the critical issues of our time. And museums have done a lot of that. And we're talking now generally about public discussion and civic engagement. And then uh, more recently, just in 2011, a project by the McCormick Foundation declared museums once perceived strictly as stodgy repositories of knowledge where silence and decorum were prized above all else, have evolved into lively forums for civic dialogue where learning is social, con contextual, and co-constructed. An important term there. Of course, sometimes civic just happens, as with the Enola Gay incident in Washington, where uh, rather than the museum engaging the public, much to its surprise, the public decided that civic engagement was in store for the museum. OK. There are a lot of considerations in all of this. Uh, but I, I guess before I go into this, I 
I'm going to focus on civic engagement in the digital age and how we use web and those sort of things for civic engagement. But that does not diminish the extraordinary value of all the other civic engagement that goes on that may not have that much of a technical atmosphere. A little museum up in Northeast Maine, the General Knox House Museum, has a benefit every year, and a year ago they invited the American head of Al Jazeera to speak. All sorts of hoopla, all sorts of protests ensued. Talk about uh, public engagement. But the wonderful thing was, when the event came to pass, twice as many people showed up to protest the protesters and saying we value free speech before you, we value your ideological shutdown. An arts museum in Queens, New York, which is the most diverse area of the United States, has a program, a commission of an artist that has set up a storefront in the community with all sorts of community programs based in art. I can go on and on, but there are many of these, and there are wonderful things happening, so I don't want to say this is relegated to the digital um, basis. We are talking about all types of museums, museums of conscience like Holocaust museums, or the Museum of Women that I'm going to talk about in a moment. We're going to um, art museums, science museums, science museums dealing with uh, climate change, and a, a museum in the UK that had people vote on whether the government should take a proactive stand in Copenhagen for clear uh, uh, policies on climate change. And the vote turned out to be negative. The government shouldn't do it. But that's what happens when you engage the public. Now, civic engagement is not the same as community engagement. I'm not going to go into that detail in this time. It is not the same, same as social engagement. I don't care what you really have you know, go, going on just in Facebook and nice chatter. And even if it's discussions or blogs, that's not what I would consider that motivation, that call to action that is civic engagement. It is, though, a spectrum of high-tech, high-touch, which I will get into. I don't want to say that in isolation, digital is, is good enough. The high-touch of human uh, contact and recognition of the, the um, custom way in which you must address your population, that becomes vital. Are communities ready to accept it? Question I started with before. And research suggests, yes, a study in Australia showed that when asked whether um, museum visitors feel that the museum should engage in controversy and difficult issues, a majority said, said yes. And community partnerships are just as key, or can be just as key, with digital civic engagement as they are with, with others. And then, characteristically, much civic engagement has to do with calls to action, which we'll show. So MWA attendees like to hear speaker voices, but sometimes it's time to show something, which is really what this is about. Uh, I'm going to call, I, I brought up uh, Harold Kramer's Das Nutzimmer, the Mortis, and he, that um, piece of work, which goes back a fair number of years, did in fact link to the United Nations and was an act of civic engagement. And if it were running today, this is the page it would take you to. And here is where you would be able to find out more, read a story, donate now, do other things. The Guggenheim Museum has partnered with BMW to create the, Guggen the Guggenheim Urban Lab, an urban think tech tank, a mobile laboratory traveling around the world to inspire innovation and ideas for urban design. Now, there you have your partnership, communities around the world, but we haven't gotten to that civic engagement quite yet. Here is the lab where people, that people come to. This is the Mumbai version. New York looked quite a bit different. But more importantly, from online, you can participate in a game called Urbanology, which asks you 10 questions, provocative questions about what your city should be. And you say yes or no. And it instantly provides you feedback on how your vote compares with everybody else who's been online. And at the end of 10 questions, it actually gives you a profile of what the city you created would be like and what cities might be like it around the world. And then you get to name and store your city. I love this. 
the International Museum of Women um, is a museum without bricks and mortar and strives to raise an awareness of women's issues around the world, collecting stories and collecting actions. So I will just point out, I, I stopped on this one, motherhood around the globe, variety of all sorts of aspects of that, really wonderful to look at. And then it has a call to action, which in this case was that they got 15,800 signatures on a pe petition for a pledge to reverse shocking statistics and tell world leaders that women everywhere deserve safe and healthy birth, and that 15,000 signature petition was delivered to the UN a couple weeks ago. That is the civic engagement, not just the stories and look at the problems and all of that stuff. Monterey Bay Aquarium, Seafood Watch, a whole bunch of stuff that people can do for, to, to maintain sustainable fisheries. And again, they, they give you, they give you a, a alternative menus and all of that sort of stuff. You can become a Seafood Watch advocate and all of that great stuff. And it's wonderful to have that. And that's an advocacy and that's right. But for me, the threshold was reached when they came out with their project fish map where you have an app and when you find a restaurant that believes in sustainable fishing, you log it in, and that becomes a resource that you can, a crowdsourced resource of how to build this whole environment for sustainable fishing. That's the civic engagement. It's two-way communication and active toward a goal. Europeana, which we've heard a lot about. And here we talk about, we, we know here already, about the history of World War I. Now, you can contribute your stories online. You have these resources you can go to online. You can contribute stories and things online. But what I love about this in particular is it is so high tech and so high touch because they went all around Europe to amass objects and personally collect stories. This made it personal. And that's a civic engagement that these families will never forget. That's why I love this photo of somebody looking at an artifact that I think if, in the, if you look at the continuation of this video, there's a grandparent or something with it. Civic engagement that goes to the heart. Holocaust Museum is what you would probably typically think of as, as the museum of conscience. Um, and here the US Holocaust Museum has given you 20 actions to mark 20 years. You can go to their pledge wall and again, if it was just, you know, like, you know, I don't want to know the Holocaust, vote yes or no, that would not be exactly civil enga civic engagement. But when you are asking people to take a pledge of what they're going to do, a couple things happened. And this was learned during the last US election, where the Obama team didn't just call people to vote. They said, do you know how to get to your voting place? What is your plan for voting? We know actions become more likely to occur when somebody has articulated internally as well as externally a plan to do so. So this is smart to say, tell us your plan. Having told you that your plan, chances are something is going to happen. This is my favorite. I have to admit, all of these are wonderful. This is my favorite. The Museum of the Movie <coughs> Image, in partnership, I, uh, in partnership in this case, in part with the YMCA and a few other organizations, has put online what they call the living room candidate. The living room candidate, that's, by the way, that's Big Bird, that's not Romney. Uh, <laughs> he's still alive. The, yeah, he's still, I, I, actually, he ate Romney. The, uh, but anyway, that phrase, you know, having somebody for lunch. The, uh, anyway, you have the living room candidate. Now, what you have here are all the TV commercials from all these years online. So you can see what it's about. You can learn what these commercials are, work, are doing. Okay, but we're not there yet. Now you can click on Ad Maker. And you can pull up these ads. And in an easy to, such an easy to use environment, 
You can pull down multiple of ads, then you have other effects, additional audio resources. You can upload your own and you can remanage political commercials. And in that same way, you are starting to feel how they're manipulating you and what you're doing. Great learning experience. One more, th and oh, and you can register and you can save your ads online and share them. And I saw a couple that were just, just great. But as they say, sometimes on late night TV in the States, wait, wait, there's more. And here's an article about it, talking about students having been online and doing this, then going to the Museum of the Moving Image to meet with curators, explore the techniques of movie making at the museum, and talk about what this whole process is. Again, that high tech, that high touch, that body involvement. The Brooklyn Museum has uh, just, I think it just uh, completed a process by which they sent people out to the community to visit the gallery. Brooklyn has the greatest density of artists uh, in, in the US, uh, even has artists who are the most dense in the US, but that's a whole other thing. The, uh, the, the sent, they sent out people to the galleries and the artist studios all over Brooklyn to help curators decide who they might show. Now, you may know that they did a thing called Click, a crowd curated exhibition a while back. That was all online, people fed stuff in. But now you're physically moving into the community. Now, that might not have been enough for me to put this in here, except that, let's, let's look at this for a moment. 1,708 Brooklyn-based artists 18,000 people made 147,000 studio visits to start now. Okay. That also um, wasn't quite enough for me. Well, let's see, do I have this here? Oops. I don't know if I have the, the piece here. But basically, the purpose of this was to engage the community in the arts community in which they live. It wasn't just to get the show. The motive was to get people into the arts community. That's the civic engagement. And you notice we have partners here too, Brooklyn Arts Council, New York City Housing Authority. Uh, and here are some, some of the artists uh, that, that were selected. And then you can go and explore who was seen by neighborhood, by type of media, accessibility. So now you have a resource for going back into the community. I don't, here's, here, here's it. This is from uh, Sharon Matt Atkins, the managing curator who was in charge of this. Click focused on using internet as a tool and the photographs were judged online in isolation. That's not civic engagement, that's crowdsourcing, that's good community participation, not for me civic engagement. During Go, we wanted to shift the focus more towards seeing a body of work in the studio with the artists present. The main objective was to connect the community with a vast number of artists working in their neighborhoods. A collaboration between members of the community and the museum curators. That's it. Am I done? Oh, oh okay, I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm sorry, I, was, I didn't see the piece. Okay, okay. And then I, I couldn't resist bringing up Al Bassano's, Bassano's um, quilt project that she mentioned. Uh, I was not going to be presumptuous enough to suggest where that might link if advocacy and civic more than that really deep human connection that this represents is. But I asked a question for you guys to think about. If El Balsamo's AIDS quilt project, project took us somewhere, where might it take us? Because the problem isn't gone yet. And the problem was born in activism, which Anne knows much better than I do. That's my shorthand for saying a lot of things that I just don't know. So I, I guess the one last thing I have to say, and I think you all knew this was coming, uh, it's time for you to do something, which is to see where civic engagement may fit in naturally with your institutions and your communities. And doing something is what museums and the web has always been about. <laughs>